aging on oak chips or just uh, aging a whiskey or a bourbon? Um, is there a better way or another way that's equivalent and maybe a little faster? We're going to try to find out the answer to that question. Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. You know, a viewer wrote in and gave us a description and a short video on uh, how they were aging spirits um, in a, a little bit more of a I guess a time-saving method uh, or measure, um, and we wanted to give it a try here in the shop. Now, you know, I already know the answer, but does this work and is it beneficial? Well, let's do this together and find out and see what the results are in the very end. I've got, uh, you, you know, I've got my settlements cut, and this has been aged for probably about three months sitting here, uh, and it is smooth. It is exactly what I expect it to be, so I'm fine with that. And I've also got a jar of 80 proof clear neutral spirit. Uh, actually, this is a corn based, so this is like a corn liquor. Um, and so I've got this thing set up. Now, I'm going to use the chemistry set that I've got available to me because it's just here and I can do it on a smaller scale. Um, and then we can scale that up into anything else. Uh, you do not need one of these in order to do this. And that's why I've got this out here. I want to show you this. This is a, this is a three-inch deflagmator that goes on the top of a column, uh, and you may be familiar with that. And what's that used for? It, well, it's, it's used to control the reflux activity that takes place in a column. Uh, and if you have this sitting on top of the column, and you open up the bottom valve because you got water in and water out, um, and when you open up that valve full blast, what happens? to the vapors that are flowing up that column. Well, they actually, because of that, they actually fully condense and drop back down. So what happens is, is that you never have any vapors that ever escape through the top of the deflagmator. That's why it's so important to control the water flow in the deflagmator so that you do allow vapors to pass. Uh, and when you don't allow vapors to pass, we have what's known as 100% reflux, which is everything that rises, condenses, and drops right back down. Uh, so this can happen on top of a still. So any still system that you have already, uh, you can actually replicate this same process. Uh, you should be doing it with a still instead of with a small chemistry set. And I do this with this because, again, I, I can see what's happening. It's a whole lot easier to explain. So let's get right to it. All right. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. Uh, this, we're going to replace this with this spiraled reflux chamber that I have that's made out of glass and it's attached to a 2,000 milliliter um, glassware uh, that I use for this chemistry set. Uh, this is a, a glass flask. And so what I have is I've got 500 milliliters of my neutral spirit. And I've also got 500 milliliters already sealed into this quart jar uh, as my base. Uh, so this is, these are the two that I'm going to compare against each other. And then I'm going to use those two and compare those against the one that I've already aged for about three months. And so that should give us some pretty good data points on what kind of works and what is either beneficial or not. Um, now if I use some simple math and calculations and I try to I try to whittle it down. You know, the average is like two ounces per gallon for uh, oak chips. And I'm going to use oak chips in this particular case. What it works out to be is, it works out to be about 15... Oh, let me get that to the right unit. There we go. It works out to be about 25 grams. About 25 grams... Oh, no, I'm... No. That is not correct because I got to take into consideration the weight of the cup itself. Oh, I need to dump these out. Tar weight, there we go. See, I already did this before. When I looked at it, I was like, that's not right. So this is 14.4, 15 grams. So I'm using 15 grams of medium toasted oak chips. 
and I'm going to put those in my test jar. And so this is sort of just, it just gives me a data point, and I just drop those in there. And of course, like everybody else in the world, yeah, you want to do it, give it a shake, uh, and just let that set aside. So that's, well, here we go, I'll set that over here. So we're going to allow that to set. Um, I've got the other 15 grams that I'm going to add to this solution once I add it to my flask. So let's do that. Again, I'm just going to use 500 milliliters because that way it, it really shortens the process. Um, it doesn't take as long to heat up that 500 milliliters. Now, you, I know you're going to ask the question, because I did too. I was thinking about that. I could theorize it. I'm like, well, if I'm putting 80 proof, which is 40% alcohol, in here, because it's equal to this one in here, um, is that not going to vaporize and, and, bur and burn off? Well, if I do this correctly and I fully reflux, anything that rises should drop right back down. So what I did was I put a small, I've got a cap that goes on the top here with a small hole in it and I can track that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to make sure that I don't have any buildup of any condensation inside this top piece of glass. Uh, and that'll, that way I, I'll, be for, I'll be sure that I'm not losing any vapors of alcohol. But I should not if I can fully condense that and I don't raise this to such a temperature that it boils off. So I want to bring it up to, I'm, I'm, first I'm going to shoot for about, oh, probably about 60 or 65 degrees Celsius. And then I may creep that up to 70 or so. I want to get a... I don't want to get a boil, but I want to get it heated up to a point to where I think that we can access the internal mechanisms or the internal structure of our medium toasted oak chips by increasing the heat um, and using alcohol in, as our solvent in order to get at this. And see, so that's the whole idea behind this. So let me add these to, and I'll be right back. Well, we're almost set. Let me tell you what I have, okay? So I've got 500 milliliters of a distillate in here with 15 grams of, dry, of medium toasted oak chips. And I've got a small stirring thing in there because this is also a stir. So that's stirring itself up. And I'll show you that in a moment. And I've got it set to 60 degrees centigrade, which is about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't want to bring it up too high or too hot too fast i'm going to bring it to a slow simmer so i'm going to work my way up but what i've got here is this i got this reflux column and i'm going to turn that on because all i got to do is drop in my pump and that's just a, that's a submersible pump and i'm going to pump the water up through there and of course it goes in the bottom comes out the top and you know the rest of the story see it filling up. Now I've turned the water on already because I've got 20 pounds of ice in this seven gallon bucket so that's plenty but I wanted to turn it on early enough so that I don't lose any vapors whatsoever. My intent is to try to speed up the aging process and extract as much out of those um, medium toasted oak chips as I possibly can. We gotta let this run and we'll be back with you. Here, oh by the way, this is the first couple of minutes and you'll see there's really not much activity, nor is there any discoloration or anything going on. This would probably take several days, uh, if not weeks. Now this is a close up and you can see all the activity that's going on there. That's that little stir that goes round and round. It's a, it's a magnetic stir, but I can already see some discoloration and I'm at 55 degrees Celsius. So uh, we're working way up to the temperature and this is only taking about five minutes to get to this point. It's a, rather warm to the touch. Well I found out, I found out early on that this condenser 
was not as efficient as uh, I would have anticipated it to be uh, because there's such a small surface area in there. It was actually pushing up. So I switched it to one of these that have these globules in it, these balls, uh, and that seems to be doing really well. So anything that's rising is dropping back down. And uh, I've been at this now for probably about 15 minutes, and I've got a really nice hue. Uh, the stirs continue to go. I'm going to let it go for a little bit longer, and we'll check back in and see what the results are. Well, it did not take long in order to bring that temperature up because it's such a small volume. Uh, and we actually overshot our temperatures. Uh, I've, I've got it set now, and I'm holding it seven. Now I'm at 77. That's about 172-ish or so, 170 uh, Fahrenheit, which is below the, the boiling point for ethanol. Um, so it's, it's sort of like a, it's not even a simmer any longer, uh, but I've got such great results, uh, visually anyway, that uh, um, it's been 30 minutes, and so I'm going to shut it down, um, and we're going to test this, and we're going to find out. Here's the first thing I need to find out is, was this efficient enough to prevent any loss of any alcohol? Uh, and that's easy because I'll just measure whatever I take back out, and if that's the same thing, I'll know whether my efficiency was there or not. And then we're going to do a taste test and kind of find out uh, what the difference is and if there is any difference to one that's been aged over time, one that's been aged using heat, and then, of course, the one we've got sitting here, um, which is pretty obvious. Be with you shortly. Okay. I've removed that from my flask and I poured it into the beaker and I'm just below 500 milliliters. It looks like I've lost probably maybe 20 milliliters. Um, so I, I think that is, I, I think what caused that was this. Uh, but after that, everything seemed to be working extremely well. So you can see what I have here. Now what I need to do is I'm, I'm going to add it to my jar. And then I've got to super chill this because there's no way I can drink it the way it is. Uh, or test it. Uh, to find out, um, yeah, I got those nice and clean. You can always tell if a mason jar is clean, usually by just smelling it. Usually. There, I don't want to leave those oak chips behind. All right, I'm going to place this in a bath of ice and um, chill this. So, let's see how long that takes. Well, I guess it's time to test this and find out what the results are. And so you can see I've got this laid out. Oh, this is beautiful. Um, I've got a small shot glass here. And oh, by the way, yeah, this has got a Scottish thistle on it. And it says a wee drum. Uh, that'll mean something there to a bunch of folks. Um, and I've got these other two small shot glasses. And the reason I'm using three different ones is because I didn't have all three of the same type. Uh, but this one is pretty much a given. We knew what that one was going to look like, and I have a suspicion I know what that's going to taste like. Uh, this is the one that we just finished. It took 30 minutes, and but I, I'm going to put these, and this is the one that's been aged for like three months, but I want to put these side by side and show you, first of all, you can see the color is very, very similar. Uh, there's a lot more clarity, I'd say, to the color of the three-month age, but this may just maybe do, this may be a function of allowing this to settle uh, and coagulate. I, give it whatever name you want, but we don't know what we don't know. Let's find out what we do know. Uh, we know by taste. Now, I've got a bottle of Sam Adams. I'm going to use that to kind of cleanse my palate. I know there's many things you can use. Uh, I choose to use a beer. So, I'm going to taste the uh, Solomon's Cut that's been aged that for that length of time, and I'm going to compare that to the one that we just did. Yeah, what, what I try to do is I try to get a mouthful, and just after I swallow it, I want to force that air back through my nasal cavity. Um, gives you that God, I can pick up all those distinctive flavors, um, and that's really smooth. I, I really like that. So, oh, that's that one. Um, well, let's move on to the one that we just did. This is the our 30-minute aging. Um, 
and I'm really curious to find out what the results are. I haven't done this yet. Uh, and the reason I haven't done this yet is because you can imagine what it'd be like if I had four or five of these. Um, here we go. I'm really surprised. Um, I can pick up the same notes or similar notes, but it's a little bit more harsh. Um, but I definitely got the color. I got the color right, and uh, this would be a really good shot sipping whiskey. Um, I'm absolutely impressed. Um, there, there is some value in that, and of course, this this last one. Let me clean that palette. And this last one, I I I, I kind of have an anticipation, but I got to get that out of my head so that I can give it an honest impression. Yeah, there's a definite difference. Definite. Absolutely. Um, that's a little harsh, but it's a clean corn liquor. Um, I'll tell you what I would say. Uh, right off the bat, this is number one. Yes. Uh, the, number two, a very, very close number two, and a very, very distant number three. Um, this has got a few weeks to go before I can I, I can come close to what I have here, but uh, I would say that this I've taken weeks off of this process by just heating it up. Oh yeah, ooh that was good. Now remember, all this can be this. You don't have to have a chemistry set or a mantle and a two thousand liter or a milliliter flask. You don't need all of that extraneous stuff. You can you can actually do this in your own reflux chamber if you have a a really good. You gotta have an efficient reflux chamber. So to start with, so if you've got something that's just kind of homemade and it's not as efficient, uh, you, you'll be losing a little bit of alcohol. But this would work uh, in. You could put your spirits back into a three gallon kettle, a five gallon kettle, a twenty gallon, whatever the case may be. Uh, and then weigh out your oak chips, add that to it, bring it up to the appropriate temperature. And what do we say, 140 degrees Fahrenheit or like 60 degrees Celsius, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, you can bring up just a little bit more. I had this up to as, as high as 78. Um, and I let just let it sit there for a while. It's right below the vaporization point for ethanol. And anything that does escape should be captured by your reflux chamber and returned immediately to your kettle. Um, and you can, evidently, you can speed up the process of aging on oak chips uh, by just the simple use of heat. Who'd have thunk it? Thanks for the person who sent that in, and I really appreciate this. This has been a really good experiment. Happy distilling.